not like the short people. Right, well, here we go. This is going to be a very personal account of vintage motoring in Australia since 1968. Um, it's that vintage motoring is experienced by my family and myself and my friends. And yes, that's my niche. That's from the 1978 Fever International Rally. Um, and the little face you can see peering out of the window, I'd love to say is me, but no, that's not me. That's my niece, who is now one of the fourth generation vintage motorists in my family. We're very proud of our four generations in vintage motoring. She now drives any of our vintage cars, but also her, she's custodian of my mother's uh, 19, uh, 1981 WB Series, B, Series 2 Statesman Caprice. So we are very much a family that's immersed in our cars. Um, usually what happens is people go, well, I'm going to do the, this bit first. What is a vintage car? This is uh, written up by one of the founders of my car club, the Vintage Motor Club. And um, something gets you in, takes your time, wastes your money, tries your patience, takes the skin off your knuckles, risks your neck, clutters up your backyard, annoys your neighbours, rattles like a bunch of bolts, freezes you in winter and fires you in summer, and generally makes you its slave. But it's worth every bit of it, even if it's just for the friends that you make and the good times you have together. And that truly is vintage motoring. So, and the other thing I should mention is uh, that my world of the vintage car is all of those things, but specifically, and I'm just technical here, vintage cars are manufactured before the 31st of December 1930. Veteran cars are older and I'm also involved with them. A vintage car is authentic to its build and specification, it's not molested in any way. That's my idea of a vintage car. So, how did I become a vintage car driver? Well, it's, um, it's a long story, but we're sitting down, so that's good. It's really quite simple. I like driving them. And apparently, I have character traits. That's me. I have a character trait for playing around with cars from an early age. And I was very lucky. My family encouraged that. My paternal family had been involved in automobiles since before World War I. My grandparents owned small bus companies and my father was in the motor trade as a family business for 68 years. So I grew up around cars and trucks. And my mother, as I said, nurtured by both sides, my mother was passionate about the cars that she had that she considered worthwhile. She spent her driving life from 1940 to 2013 correcting people who assumed her very impressive and desirable vehicles were her husband's. She chose her own cars and she hugely enjoyed driving them. And travelling long distances was quite the norm in my family when other people didn't hardly leave Sydney in their cars when I was a kid. We drove a 1950s, or mum and dad did, drove a 1950 Studio Baker to Sydney to Perth just for a holiday and back again. So sitting in a car was something I did from the very earliest time and going a long way and driving, no problem. And mum, uh, I have to admit, getting into vintage cars wasn't that hard for me. When I was about 11, an original and running 1928 Chev was stored in our shed. Uh, that's it there, 28 Chev. And my father showed me how to operate it. So for years I drove it around our paddocks quite happily and it taught me how to drive. Basically. Um, when it was going to be taken away, I got a bit upset. I, I was rather attached to that car at the age of 14. And mum very incautiously said, oh, there's lots of them advertised in the paper. Well, that was a very silly statement to make because that Saturday we were out looking at old cars in the paper. And one of those came home with us. The very lovely 1930 straight mate 5 litre Nash. That's a very big beast and it's a very lovely car to draw, I can assure you. The chef, the ratty looking thing, then parked outside the shed. It never left either because the owner decided if I had that I'd better have the chef as well and he left it with us. Apart from which, he really had got less enamoured of the idea of restoring a car and figured he'd leave it with us. So the chef has been with me for well over 50 years and the Nash for 50 odd years. So I grew up around vintage cars and that's, uh, that's inside the Nash quite a few years ago obviously. Um, and those two cars introduced me to the world of vintage car ownership which um, most of you will probably be aware, often starts out with one or two at the beginning and then finishes up with five or six historic cars. And yes, I've been there too with far too many cars in my shed and I probably still do that. 
But when you get a vintage car, owning and restoring, owning a car isn't just about owning, it's about restoring. Because I'm, also those that aren't aware of what vintage motoring is like, that's what it is. You've got to do some restoring, usually. And restorations led me to meet people all over the world. The similar cars, buying parts, getting information, going to swap meets, getting up at 4.30 in the morning, driving miles to maybe look at some useful parts and finding out they aren't at all when you get there, and negotiating for pre repair work. And I've also learned lots of skills along the way. Apart from the ones I already knew about cars, I'm pretty good at cutting out rust and repairing. I'm a dead hand at pin striping, and I'm not too bad at upholstery as well, auto upholstery. So I've learnt those as I go along. Vintage cars, well that's just, I don't know why I threw that photograph in there. But that's an early rally, that's the Nash in its previous paint colour, which uh, and the owner before us had painted, it's now been returned back to its original paint colour. And yes, that's a rather young me lounging there in my cap on the running board. Um, but what I really wanted to show you was that, yes, I do get the skin knuckles and the greasy hands and stuff, and um, that's doing some work on the Nash. Because the other thing about old cars is they take a fair bit of maintaining. Again, I was very fortunate. I learned an enormous amount from my dad and others in his generation who knew the vintage cars when they were new. And my vintage cars, yep, they give me a fair bit of practice at maintenance. So I think it's sometimes strange, I don't find it strange, but a lot of people find it strange that I do know how to fit and change vintage car tyres. I do understand the difference between artillery wheels and uh, demountable rims on, on uh, military vehicles. I know how to change radiator hoses and fan belts, and I do know how to generally maintain my cars. And sometimes I can identify what's mechanically going wrong. And a little bit perverse, perversely, perhaps, I find that when uh, chaps rush in to help the lady with the old car, I get a little bit uh, cheesed off because they become more of a nuisance to me than an assistance. Those in the know from my club and who rally with me know, if I need help, I will ask for it. I don't need someone who knows nothing about that coming and trying to tell me about it. With finished cars, it does really help if you know some basic mechanics, and even better if you know your vintage car really well. After 50 years, I know that particular car incredibly well. But there's always lots of people in the vintage car hobby because things do go wrong. That's uh, my Oldsmobile with a broken axle. We were out in the middle of nowhere in a country part of New South Wales. A quick call to one of my mates in the nearby club, and he's there with the car trailer assistance all through the club, all through the club movement. There was another serious incident um, we had. It took a little bit of fixing at, um, I think it was Ballarat. But again, collective, everybody gets in. My husband was there that day friend of ours, um, there's not a lot of, it's a big bonnet, but when you get six of us under there, the great brains, brains get together and we fix it, so we good. The other things that go wrong, this is a breakdown out at Gilgandra, and uh, again, we're under the car, we're trying to sort it all out, and uh, these are people from my club, so I'm happy to take their help, because I know it's going to be the right kind of help. But they, as I said, will stand back and go, what do you think, first of all, and go, I can't remember what Martin would do, so boys get into it. I will pike out when I know I can't fix it. My Nash is back on the road after a major rebuild. It's another member of our club helping me that day. Um, I should point out, my husband took the engine apart for a rebuild after we worked on the Great Gatsby film and unfortunately passed away. So putting it back together again has been a labour of love for myself and the friends in my car club. That's the engine uh, still going through the rebuild. You can see it's rather Rather impressive engine, I think. It sounds good to be right when it runs. And uh, once you get it going, it's all good. Put in the hoist and you're happy. That's the back of the old, not the mesh though there. So when you've done the restoration and repair part and your vintage car's on the road, well, that's pretty much what it's all about. Your car's on the road. That's the key statement. There's no power steering in a vintage car. There's no ABS. There's no floating suspension. It's all mechanical and it's all in your hands. The sound of the engine, and the direct feel of the road through the steering wheel, the wind in your face and your hair, that's what vintage cars is all about, are all about. They bring your senses close to the road and to the environment around you when you're driving. No sealed cabins, no electric seats, you smell the car, you smell what's outside the car. You dress appropriately, because vintage car drivers experience all weathers and veteran car drivers. 
You have to have a passion to experience all those with us. You rug up really, really appropriately. Finnish motoring is pure and physically full on driving. It's unlike any other driving one does, or any driving one does in a modern car. Which leads me to a little bit about driving ability. These days, a lot of people are scared of the double shuffle. Gear changing in a car without synchromesh. It's really just a blend of hand and foot and hearing skills. Then you have to be simultaneously precise and respectful of the car. And it'll cooperate. No crunch gears, no freewheeling while you're frantically try to engage one gear or any gear that go forward. But there are a lot of people now that I meet who go, well, I couldn't drive that, it's not automatic. Very sad. And you've got to be a bit alert about stopping because Finnish cars don't quite stop where you think they're going to, but you learn, again, with your car, that that's how you've got to drive it. You cope with the fact that braking isn't quite as good as it should be. But when you've got it all together, the joy of the open road beckons and the engine's purring and you've got the gear changes going well. That's vintage motor. The other part of that, having a vintage car, is being in a vintage car club, which are the lifeblood of vintage motor. I've been fortunate to be involved in really good clubs here and overseas. And I always recommend that people join one before they buy a vintage car because the people in the club will help you get the right car. I've started car clubs and enjoy seeing that they've survived. My club experience really began in 1970 and I was lucky enough to join the Vintage Motor Club in Sydney, a club that already had a strong history of very successful and prominent women drivers. So when I joined, the blokes there thought nothing of the 17-year-old girl, girl driving a very large American car. At that time, no other club in New South Wales had as many, sorry, had as many women as members of the committee, as, pro as drivers, as successful competitive drivers. They had lady presidents. These days the VMC is a smallish club and time has taken its toll on some of those lady drivers when I joined. But I am not the only VMC woman driver. At the moment there's around five of us who drive quite regularly. And I'm sure that there's plenty of other clubs too out there and I do find them. But I can be positive, there's not one member of either section of the VMC who would question that a woman should be driving vintage cars. Being in a car club brings all about friendships. That's the start of uh, our recent mountain rally, I parked at Little Hartley. We get going, we always have lunch together and have a lot of fun and it's very convivial. And there's that same chef. Uh, my club that day was celebrating the car's 80th birthday. Not that car's, we were just doing every other car that was 80 years old that day in our club. So the chef got it running and uh, everyone managed to swim, all managed to start it and have fun driving it around. The other thing about my club, it has a very strong motorsport history. In the 1970s and 80s, it conducted very fiercely competitive weekend hill climbs and gym carnas. That's the Nash at Amaru. Amaru Hill Climb, which I miss very much, Amaru Park and its hill climb. Uh, a Gymkhana, you know, the, I think Green's Motorcade Museum in the 1970s. And a mountain rally probably from the 1970s as well. And we're not averse to going on dirt roads or anything like that. We don't, we're not precious about our cars, we're just respectful of them. And there's one of our, uh, our Gymkhana this year, the Oldsmobile. So we're still a competitive club, but we've toned down a tiny bit. Through the VMC, I was very lucky the VMC is very much involved in leadership at the highest level of car club, historic car clubs in New South Wales, and I became involved in Concord judging. So I stepped out of the car and took up this part as well, which I have enjoyed immensely, again, for the last 40 odd years, being a Concord judge at every level from local club through to international. I've also been involved through the VMC in club administration at, again, local, state and national level, and I now find myself the webmaster for the Council of Heritage Motor Clubs. Being in British cars though was essentially about rallies, and I've been on hundreds of rallies, big and small, including the internationals, with like-minded people. Uh, that's a rally out in um, near Dubbo a couple of years ago called the Pre-31 Autumn Tour. And that's a lot of my club, including three generations of the Forbert family in the photo, uh, we just won the Bell Mason Shield, which is a very prestigious club award in New South Wales. Uh, the little bloke down the front, he doesn't say much. Uh, the yellow jumper on, that's Neville. He's our club mascot. 
it gets to go to lots of them. But the rallies and the club have also seen NICAR in some amazing places. Main Street of Canal, where we just took it over. That's not just my club, that's all the clubs in the Council of Greenwich Motor Clubs on a particular day. The vintage car component, I have to show you the street going the other way, it's the post vintage cars up to 19, about 1985. So we take over towns, we rally along and have a great time. We get to go some good places, and I put this in because I couldn't find the old photograph. That's um, about last year at Parks, the dish. Well, that's not too hard to do, you just go in the car park. But years ago, we were there on a rally, and the people at the dish said, Oh, would you like your car photograph with the dish? Yeah. So, one by one, we drove under, the man wound the dish up like that. When we parked in the right spot for the photographer, he wound the dish down. And you look at this thing coming down the roof of your car and go, oh my God. But he stopped. And this, all of us that were there that day, um, maybe about 30 cars, have this unique photo of our car but parked right under the dish. You cannot do that now, they won't let you get anywhere near it. That's as close as you can go with a car. So you get to go some amazing places. You get to play dress-ups. We don't do dress-ups a lot in my club, but when the client, in this case the Canara Great Race from Sydney to Melbourne, asked for us to be dressed up, well, we did. So uh, there's that very young lady again. I do remember her, my husband and my son. Um, this would be, again, about 30 odd years ago. But a unique opportunity to go in the Canara Great Race. You get to go to some, I said, some pretty amazing places. There's not many people that can say they've driven a 1930 straight eight Nash at speed down the S bends on Mount Panorama. Mm -hmm. I have. That was a competitive trial in my club, and we used Mount Panorama. And yes, the Nash does go down the S bends startlingly well, actually. So you get to go things like that, Mount Panorama. You get to park under the Port Cochere at Redford Park, which you're not normally allowed to get anywhere near. And you get to drive around places like um, Camden Estate and up near the house of the MacArthur's house of Camden. So vintage cars open up an enormous number of gates to you that are not normally opened up. When you're in a vintage car, you get to drive and meet celebrities. And you meet, I just put celebrities over there, you meet wonderful people. This dear lady here, we did a display day at an uh, old people's home near us. She came out quite late in the event started chatting with me and they had a photograph. Her mother, at age 14, drove the family Cadillac, uh, I think in about 1912, from Sydney to Melbourne. Sounds from something familiar like yesterday. Carola's mother drove the family Cadillac with the aunt and the mother to Melbourne to see the Melbourne Cup in 1914 or 1912. So you get stories like that, which are just fantastic. And you inevitably get to take friends to their weddings, owning a vintage car. You're very popular when you're a vintage car. Through the club, our cars have been used for film and TV. Uh, this was a television show we last year. Um, and I said we were in Gatsby. That's the, uh, the big film set inside the studios at Fox Studios in Sydney with the Nash and the Oldsmobile. Um, you'll just see with the Oldsmobile, <coughs> those that know where the steering wheel should be, We'll notice on the wrong side of the old so it's left hand, become left hand drive with a fake steering wheel, as did the Nash. Um, so things like that you get to do. <coughs> More on the Gatsby set down at um, on the harbour. And that's the two two of the cars that were brought over from America for filming Great Gatsby. Charging, I must say, at great speed to my Nash, and I was somewhat concerned and they realised they didn't have the actors, they had the stunt drivers, I felt much more comfortable. Uh, and that, uh, again, it's wonderful what they do to you when you go on a film set. Uh, they may look so glamorous. I kept saying, well, there's all the blokes from the club and then there's me, the bad lady. But anyway, they didn't care. And you don't see me in the film anyway. I have looked it closely and you can't find me. But it was a heap of fun. And I should mention to you that I did meet my husband through the car club, so the car club's important for that as well. And we toured lots together. We swapped our cars between us, didn't we? People never knew who was going to be driving what car between Martin and I, and now I look after his old wheel. I also enjoy more than vintage cars. I enjoy driving veterans, but I don't currently own one. I enjoy driving my mother's statesman. So if you sort of gravitate to that Caprice today at the Holden Heritage Centre, that's why I love them. I also drive a World War II Jeep, 
and have a lot of fun with that. And I also now recently drive a 1978 F100 ex New South Wales Police restored F100 truck. So I don't just stick with the really old ones, I just stick with the old ones. Now about we're going to vintage motoring. Oh, I've got to say quite quite at the beginning here, I have been fairly treated most often. I've been treated equally in the world of the vintage car. But I should emphasise it's inevitably among, inevitably among those who've been in the hobby for many years that I've been accepted as just another vintage motorist. Generally those new to the hobby and those outside just can't quite grasp that I own and drive and restore vintage and historic vehicles. I admit I've been wrangled many times when someone said something to me about your father's car or your husband's car. The assumption that I as a woman with that car am not a vintage motorist. It's quite insulting actually. They wouldn't do that to a chap. It's very apparent that people, and well, I've got to say in truth, mostly men, are looking for my husband to discuss the car and they're a bit thrown when I say, this is my car and I can tell you all about it. I acknowledge that taking the wheel of a vintage car was and is not without its critics if you're a woman. And while they'd not comment on a bloke driving a vintage car, many will when it's a woman. It also confuses me that in the 1970s, when I and my contemporaries were affably accepted among vintage car people, men who are my father's generation generally accepting us for our driving, our knowledge of our cars, and with little or no fuss or contrary comment about gender. In the 1970s and 80s, there were quite a lot of women in veteran and vintage car clubs who extensively rallied and toured cars. In the last 20 years, it became quite common that I was the only woman on the road. There was a very noticeable decline in the number of women actively driving veteran and vintage cars, and it seems that women, women found that they were not as welcome in the hobby as they should have been. Catering officers were welcome, yes. Drivers, no. It's sad when one heard, and indeed still hears, a mature woman say, he let me, never let me drive his old car. Or worse, I couldn't drive that. Thwarted, obstructed, or plain gave up. I don't know but it does disappoint me that baby boomer women who drove more, way more than their mother's generation have become non-drivers of older vehicles. Those women drove Beatles and old Holdens and Volkswagens when they were 17 and 18 and into their 20s. But yet they find now, for some reason, they can't drive those vehicles. I don't understand that. If they just drove those, they don't have to drive a vintage car, just drive a historic car. But I note the trend has been reversing. I can quickly identify a number of women, many of them Generation Xs, Millennials and even Gen Zs, who currently drive historic vehicles and who lead or hold vital roles in the committees of heritage vehicles and peak organisations in the hobbies right across Australia. The ROCV's Florence Thompson Rally is a fantastic example I think it was 180 the last time, Daryl, yeah. had the rally. 180 women drivers, so it can be done. The pre-31 tour in New South Wales, as I mentioned before. I just used to slide it. Yeah. It's not just here with the tours that are, that are, that are here. Oh, that's from the pre-31. That's, uh, that's a group of us. There was actually more women driving that rally a couple of years ago. Uh, the youngest girl there was driving a veteran model too. So it's only a small rally and yet we have that many women driving. And the Florence Thompson rally, as I said, is just amazing. So there are more women getting out in vintage cars and the trend isn't just here. In the US, lots of women are taking up historic and classic car ownership and motoring. In the UK too, I hear the number of women driving in the London to Brighton is increasing each year. So to finish, historic car clubs are all talking about how to get young people into old cars. And the talk invariably focuses on getting the young blokes involved. However, I reckon if the movement actively broadened the focus to encouraging women and girls to step forward and get behind vintage steering wheels, we'd all be doing the future of our hobby a big favour as everyone has to remember, they too inherit old cars. So why should they be bypassed? 
The joy of motoring is not exclusively for one gender or age group, nor has it ever been. Think birth events. Lots of little girls have been enthralled by motors and motoring for just as long as little boys have. But sadly, most were dissuaded from pursuing that interest. My hope is that more girls and women will be given the opportunity and the welcome to become vintage motorists. What? Stop this. Sorry. They've been really watching the seagulls. Help, Tony. Help, son. Help, son, sorry, anyone? Sorry, I'll be all with you. Oh, there we go, we've got something, yeah. Sorry, catch up with that again. Because to me, British motoring is all about the driving. That's the Isles of Earl a couple of years ago on the open road. It's all about the people that I meet and it's all about the places that I get to go in my vintage car. Any questions? Just a quick one, yeah, not a question, actually a comment. Same thing's happening in hot rodding. Lots of women now involved in hot rodding with their own cars, buying their own cars, building their own cars, getting their hands dirty. In my own instance, my wife and I both drive our cars extensively and we drive turnabout, hour about everywhere. Um, and I'm seeing more everywhere and more and more young people. Just incidentally too, because I travel a lot doing this everywhere I go, I'm seeing more people, more young people involved in old cars in Australia than anywhere else in the world. We lead, I reckon, by a fair way. It's actually, I hear that too, a lot of people talking about, oh, there's no young people. That's actually been fairly um, well challenged in America, both statistically and by observation. I would challenge it here. People said our hobby was going to die. It has not, it's skipped a generation. I often say, forget the generation perhaps below me, or mine, or a little bit, but below me. And then the grandkids are taking up the car and going, what happened to granddad's car? Oh, we sold it, no one was interested. Well, now they've got to try and find the money to buy it. If they're fortunate, the family has hung on to it. And I've seen those people bringing out those veteran and vintage cars, which is absolutely wonderful. Jenny, I'd reinforce, in fact, what Larry said, uh, In the last 12 months, uh, the Veteran Car Club yes. of Australia, at the place of Victoria, has increased its membership by 100, yeah. which yeah. is nearly 25%, and the majority of those are young, mm. he says, about yeah, yeah, 60, <laughs> um, men and women yes. under 40 years of age, That's uh, right. who are inheriting their grandparents' mm. motor vehicles. They've skipped a generation. They're, Mums and dads are going to be interested, but now they're inheriting their parents' motor vehicles. But there is still resistance, and this was handed home to me four years ago when I started the Florence Thompson Tour. I approached the RACD with this grand plan for an event exclusively for women drivers. And it was received so well that when I put in the claim for budget, uh, I made a little bit of an angry claim. It came back and they, they actually doubled. So the RACD doubled the budget that I forecast for it and just said, go for it, do whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. But one enduring memory that sits with me is the first delegates meeting of the club. So I took the and proposed the event to a gentleman uh, quite seriously, uh, put his hand up and asked the question that I asked for, you know, are there any comments or questions? Seriously stood up and said, realise uh, that uh, you're being um, discriminatory and you can't do that. Mm. Uh, I, did, I just did not know what to say. Mm. There is still this resistance in the membership and in the, some of the older members of some of the more traditional clubs, it's not really a woman's place. It, 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 it fascinates me that a baby, my baby boomer generation has become more discriminatory than my, my father's generation. Yeah. It's, quite, it's quite peculiar when you think, Baby, builder, baby boomer blokes came through the women's liberation period. I think they're getting their revenge back now, actually, by keeping us out of it. I'm not sure. No, that's probably I shouldn't have said that. But it, it, is, it is really, really bizarre. As I said, I, you know, I go to, go to rallies and you'll see these women sitting there 
And uh, those comments are genuine. I, I've heard them many times. He wouldn't let me drive his own car, or I wouldn't know how to drive that. And I look at it and I go, you know what? You're at university. When I was at university, I bet you drove an old, old Morris Elite or something or other, or an 1100. Just go and get that 28 Chevy. It's kind of the same. Or, for heaven's sake, put H plates on a Morris 1100 and bring it to a rally. I don't understand it. It's old. Thank you.